last of this mini-series on how to play licks over major chords, we'll take a quick look at three commonly used ideas in jazz. Even if you have no real interest in playing jazz, you'll find the thinking behind these ideas are equally applicable to other genres as well. Starting with the familiar E-shaped bar chord, in the right-hand diagram I've added in the positions of quite a few extra notes. The second, the flatted third, sixths in both octaves, as well as a flatted seventh. Here's an example of this E-shaped lick played over an A chord. It starts on the fifth of the chord here at fret seven on the A string. We then have to be sure to jump straight up to the third string, which we play here at the fifth fret with our second finger, and this is the flatted third in the chord, which we then slide to the major third. Then we play this fifth from the upper octave, we hit that twice, and then add the sixth, two frets higher. So that completes the first phrase. down by jumping straight down to the flat third on our first finger now at fret 5 on the G string and sliding that down to the second. That's followed by the root note here at fret 7 on the D string played with a pinky. Then the sixth in this octave, played at fret 4 on the D string, down to the 5th that we started on at fret 7 on the 5th string. So those two phrases again at slow tempo. Then we start coming back up the run via the route we came down, so that's the 6th again, at fret 4 on the D string, and the root note at fret 7. And then we terminate the lick with a nice double stop slide into an implied dominant 7th chord from a semitone below. So that's 4th string, 4th um, fret, together with 3rd string, 5th fret, and just slide them both up a fret. Here's the tab. And here's the full demo again at slow tempo. And more or less at full speed. Our second lick is based around the movable D shape and introduces the idea of chromatic runs. You can see that in the diagram on the right, I've simply added a chromatic run of notes to link the flatted third with the fifth. Here's the lick played for a G major chord. We start with the second finger on the root note here at fret 8 on the B string. And then we play 
play the four notes of this chromatic run from the third at the seventh fret on the top string up to the fifth on the pinky there at the tenth fret on the top string. And then we jump back a fret and slide in from the minor third to the major. So that's from fret 6 to fret 7 on the top string with the first finger. Probably best to think of that as a phrase in itself and getting that well nailed before moving on to the second part. Notice the slight swing in the rhythm. Now we come straight down the main triad notes. So that's the roots at fret 8 on the B string, the, the fifth at fret uh, 7 on the G string. Then we reach down with our pinky to the fourth note of the scale, which is at fret 10 on the D string, which we play as a passing note to get us to the third note of fret below, and then resolve back to the root note on our second finger, now at fret uh, 8 on the B string. Here's the tap. And here's the full demo. to the final leg, which is actually very similar to the one we just played, but this one is based on the A shape. Here you see I've actually added in the same chromatic link from flat third to fifth, but also added in the sixth as well. Here's the lick played over a D chord. Again, we start on the root note with the second finger, so that's here at fret 7 on the third string. And then we play the whole of this chromatic run from flat 3 at fret 6 on the second string. We reach up there to the um, flat 5 note and then jump across to the top string and back a fret to grab that note at the 5th um, fret on the top string, which is our 5th. So that's our first phrase. We then grab the root note again, but this time with our 3rd finger that's fret 7 on the G string. Before playing the 6th, which is here at fret 7 on the top string, with the pinky. Followed by bending the flat 3rd from minor to major using the 2nd finger, here at fret 6 on the B string. We can in fact leave the lick there as a sort of unresolved lick, or we could resolve it back to the root note if needed. So sometimes we use it like that, unresolved, and sometimes we resolve it. Depends what you need. Here's the tab. and the full demo. Or 
those three licks are extremely versatile and can be used to add a bit of jazz flavour over pretty much any major chord in music of any genre. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at a couple of arpeggio-based runs that I find very useful over major chords. If you found this little video interesting, please click on the like button if there is one or leave a comment and do feel free to share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to gain full access to all our guitar teaching materials, please visit the Secret Guitar Teacher site and take a free look round at what's available there. See you again soon.